Okay. So let me use the same circuit that uh, I was using last time. which was this circuit with a number of uh, resistors and a current source. I called this node N0, N1, N2 and N3. And the way I would go about doing nodal analysis is I write uh, I make N0 my reference node. You could pick any one. In this case, I have picked N0. And I write down uh, the voltages of each node with respect to N0 as V1, V2, V3. And express all my uh, relationships in terms of V1, V2 and V3. Okay. Now, so that means the voltage here is V1. Voltage here is V2 and the voltage there is V3. And let me call this R11, R1, R22, R33, R12, R1, R23 and R13. This is I1 and this is I3. Now in this case, uh, what I first do is write KCL at nodes N1, N2 and N3. If I do that and I group together all the uh, variables, uh, I group together the uh, coefficients of each of these variables V1, V2, V3, I get the equations in a certain form and I can express that in a neat matrix form which I am going to write down now. We saw that the diagonal elements of this matrix basically correspond to the total conductance connected to each node. Okay, So the first row corresponds to the KCL at N1, second row to N2 and third row to N3. And I will use the same ordering for the variables also. Okay, That is V1, V2 and V3. Okay, And the diagonal elements this uh, element A11 of the matrix corresponds to the total conductance connected to node 1 which is G11, the reciprocal of R11, G12 and G13. Similarly here this element 22 will consist of G22, G12 and G23. Okay. And finally here in this position we have the total conductance at this node. And the off diagonal elements, this uh, entry A12 for instance, is the negative of the conductance between node 1 and node 2. So this is minus G12 and it's a symmetric matrix this is also minus g12 and here we have the negative of the conductance between node 1 and 3 and here also the same thing so this will be minus g13 and finally this will be these two will be minus g23 okay and On the right hand side, we will have the current sources and in the first one we will have the current source connected to node 1 in the direction that it pumps current into the node. Okay, It is basically the total current coming into node 1 that is plus I1 and nothing is no current source independent current source is connected to node 2. So this will be 0. Finally, here in a current I3 is pushing current into node N3. So this will be I3. 
okay so this is the this is what we had and this is what by solving this we get the node voltages and this is what uh, we call nodal this is what is termed as nodal analysis okay now the circuit is not solved completely but once you know all the node voltages you know all the branch voltages the branch voltages will be either the node voltage itself for instance for this branch and this branch the branch voltage equals v1 and if you take this branch for instance r12 the branch voltage is v1 minus v2 okay so that way you can find all the branch voltages and you can also find the branch currents by using branch voltages and the element vi relationships okay so this is what is known as nodal analysis okay and as i said these will be conductances total conductance at the nodes and these the off diagonals ones will be negative of the conductance between two nodes okay so that's all that's there to it and we get a nice uh, symmetric matrix okay now the only restriction is in this case we have taken a circuit which has resistors and current sources only we don't have other types of uh, independent sources that is a voltage source or we don't have dependent sources yet we will add them as we go along okay so that's a quick review of uh, what we did uh, in the previous class any questions any confusion regarding that okay and we have this equation in the form the conductance matrix times the node voltage vector equals the vector of independent current sources okay and this uh, this bar below the letter means that it's a vector and finally this is the vector of independent sources okay and to solve for this we have to invert the matrix and multiply by the independent sources okay all right now i will not worry about uh, solving this we will see examples of this later but uh, there are ways to invert the matrix if it's a 2 by 2 matrix or a 3 by 3 matrix you can do it by hand beyond that you usually do it using a computer okay but the point here is there is a systematic method of calculating all the node voltages you first set up all the node equations and then uh, there is a procedure whereby you will get all of the node voltages okay there is a question why why did i call this a matrix and this a vector if you have a matrix with a single column that's usually called a vector okay a column uh, 
single column matrix is usually called a vector. So we have V1, V2, V3, which is, you can call it a 3 by 1 matrix, but uh, it is common to call it a vector. Okay. Now, uh, so like I said, I will not worry about uh, solving this right now. It's assume that we'll be somehow able to solve it. Uh, so what I will do now is to uh, add other kinds of element which we have not added before. Okay. So let me take the same uh, circuit and modify it slightly. Now let me remove this uh, resistor R23 and connect an independent voltage source. Okay. And I will call this uh, V0. Okay. So we want to do nodal analysis. Similar analysis as we did before, but with independent voltage sources. Okay. So what I did was I had a resistor here. I could have put a voltage source anywhere even in parallel with it, but I have just removed that resistor and connected this voltage source. Okay. So now uh, my question is, can we go ahead exactly as we did before? If not, what is the difficulty with this? Okay. The network connection broke and then something happened. Yeah, as uh, some of you recognized, the problem is. with the problem is with writing uh, KCL here and there where the voltage is connected. Okay. The KCL is still valid. The current going here plus the current going there plus the current going there is zero. But the problem is earlier when we had a resistor we could express the current as this uh, conductance times the voltage difference V2 minus V3. Now we don't know what the current is through a voltage source. By definition, it will support any value of current. Okay. So that is the problem with doing nodal analysis when you have independent voltage sources. So now uh, what do we have to do? So we have an extra unknown. Let me call that I X and I will use the passive sign convention as always. I will show the current through the voltage source as going from plus to minus. Okay. That is, as we said, this I X is 
not known okay but i can still write the kcl at uh, these three equations if i denote this as ix and that's what i will do okay so at n1 i will write n1 the equation is exactly the same as before okay so i will write it uh, straight away at n2 what we have are the currents flowing out that is v2 times g22 v2 minus v1 times g12 and minus ix ix is flowing in so minus ix is flowing out and similarly at n3 what do we have we have minus g13 times v1 and plus ix because ix is flowing out of the node and plus g13 plus g33 times v3 okay equals i3 okay so we have an extra variable ix now uh, so we have uh, the first equation is the same as before and the second one and the third one have this extra variable ix so now i totally have uh, four variables v1 v2 v3 and ix okay and only three equations so how do i go about solving this is there an equation i am missing this is a question for the participants i mean i have now four variables and then uh, only three equations to solve for four variables i need four equations right four independent equations so where will i get the extra equation from so clearly uh, so far i have not described the voltage source itself and that gives me the extra equation so this difference v3 minus v2 will be equal to v0 okay let me write it with the same order minus v2 plus v3 equals v0 Uh, some of you gave the answer that v2 minus v3 is v0 no it is v3 minus v2 equals v0 okay with the polarity so now i have uh, four equations that is the kcl at the three nodes plus the equation for the voltage source and this uh, is a system of uh, four equations in four unknowns and i will be able to solve this one okay and i will write this in uh, terms of the matrix so what i have are for the case of uh, nodal analysis with independent voltage source i have the variables to be the node voltages in general n minus 1 node voltages plus currents through the voltage sources
in my uh, circuit I have a single voltage source but let's say if I have L voltage sources I will have L currents through the L voltage sources. So the number of variables increases by L okay and the number of equations also increases by L because each voltage source provides a constraint okay. Okay. Now I will uh, write out the equations in matrix form including the extra variable Ix. This will be G11 plus G12 plus G13 and minus G12 minus G13 and if you look at the variable vector it will be the node voltage V1, V2, V3 and Ix. Okay. And in the first equation for node N1, the variable Ix does not appear. So, the coefficient here is 0. Okay. And in this case, I will have minus G12 and here G22 plus G12 okay and here I do not have anything and minus 1 because I have minus Ix. This is the KCL equation at node N2 and at node N3 I have minus G13 okay nothing for V2 and G13 plus G33 and I have plus 1 because plus Ix appears in the equation and I have the constraint for the voltage source which is that V3 minus V2 that is minus V2 plus V3 and these things do not appear equal I1 0 I3 these are the currents into node 1 and node 3 and the last equation is minus V2 plus V3 equals V0. Okay. So, this is the uh, this is the nodal analysis expressed in matrix form and this has been modified to include an auxiliary variable and that auxiliary variable is the current through an independent voltage source. Okay. And this scheme is known as modified nodal analysis okay so whenever you have uh, independent voltage sources you need to have the current through the voltage source as extra variables and then you will be able to again set up the equation systematically and solve for them okay any questions about this so the modification includes basically extra variable which is the current through the voltage source ok. So, any questions about this how to deal with uh, how to deal with an independent voltage source in the circuit. When we have an independent voltage source, we define an auxiliary current which is the current through the voltage source. So, that gives us an extra variable. We get an extra equation from the equation for the voltage source. Okay. Now obviously if you have many voltage sources the size of the vector will grow 
but uh, i have to emphasize here that the main point of uh, doing this that is being able to write the equation systematically is so that you can solve it even for large circuits okay it is not intended that you invert this matrix by hand okay it is only through a computer right i mean for any circuit of any reasonable size you will need a computer to do that but you have to set up your program so that it looks at the circuit and sets up the equations or this matrix equation correctly okay and there are routines for inverting the matrix that you can utilize to solve this now uh, this matrix i will still continue to call it conductance matrix but not all the elements are conductances clearly the ones in the last row and last column they are not conductances okay now on the right side we have the vector of independent sources it's not just independent current sources now we have independent current and voltage sources independent current and voltage sources but otherwise the structure is exactly the same as before which is the matrix g as i said i still continue to call it g but not all elements in this are conductances these are all conductances but these are uh, uh, basically dimensionless okay the last row and last column g times v that originally was the vector of uh, node voltages but now it also includes a current and finally equals i and again this is a vector of independent uh, variables it has the current sources as well as the voltage source now i don't want to introduce a new notation so i'm going to keep it as it is okay now uh, like i said this is good for uh, analyzing things with a computer because the procedure is very systematic right for every voltage source you simply add a new uh, variable which is the current through the voltage source and also solve for it and you add equations corresponding to each voltage source now when you are solving it by hand uh, you would not want to increase the number of equations like this uh, generally you solve small circuits by hand and then going from a 3 by 3 matrix to a 4 by 4 matrix is tremendously complicated okay when you are doing hand calculations but as a computer can handle uh, matrices with uh, thousands of uh, rows and columns quite easily okay so now uh, for hand analysis the nodal analysis is uh, done with a very slight modification okay so let me uh, put down these equations again so we introduce this extra variable ix right now what we do is for instance let's say i write up the equations like this and the voltage source is connected between n2 and n3 okay so i add up the equations kcl equations for n2 and n3 that is i take uh, this equation here plus that equation there and i add them up to form a new equation and we get something the main point is that this now includes the uh, left hand side of each equation is the total current flowing out of the nodes that is current flowing out of e out of each node in every branch connected to that node okay so when i add up these two what it means is it's the sum of uh, all the currents flowing out of n2 and n3 together okay so let me do that i will get minus g12 my plus uh, g13 times b1 
plus g12 plus g2 root times v2 plus g13 plus g33 times v3 to be equal to i3. So the important point is when I add this, this plus ix here, okay, so the minus ix here cancels with plus ix there, okay. Because I have connected, uh, I have taken the two nodes at, uh, between which the voltage source is connected, one of them will have plus ix, the other one will have minus ix, so they will cancel, okay. So that is the important part. So what does it mean now? This, uh, the left hand side here is the total current flowing out of N2 and N3, okay? And any current that is flowing between N2 and N3 will get cancelled out because it will have plus in one uh, contribution and minus in the other contribution. So essentially what we are doing is forming what is known as a super node that is a combination of multiple nodes in this case v2 and v3 we always combine the two nodes across which the voltage source is connected and write kcl in terms of all the currents flowing out of that node okay for instance we add that current that is flowing out of the super node this current that's flowing out of the super node the current here and the current there and the current there okay so we write it as the total current flowing out of the super node uh, to be equal to the total amount of independent current source currents being pumped into that node okay now you can see that the current in the voltage source is not flowing out of this super node or into the super node okay so it's not cutting the super node so it disappears from the picture now this is a technique to reduce the number of equations and not have this auxiliary variable okay so typically when you do hand analysis you would uh, use this and by introducing a super node you will end up with cancelling ix and have only one equation and we have this extra equation that is we have still lost one equation originally we had three for the three nodes because of the voltage source and combining these two nodes we have a single super node equation so we have two this is one and that is the other one okay but we do have the additional constraint imposed by the voltage source so finally we have three equations in three variables okay and this is one fewer than uh, what we did using modified nodal analysis. So for hand analysis, when you have voltage sources, you introduce super nodes and go ahead with the analysis. Okay. Now one very important thing is that when I say I combine these two into a super node, I'm not shorting this to that. I still retain this voltage as V2 and this one as V3. Okay. So all the currents must be expressed uh, appropriately. That is the current in R12 will be V2 minus V1 times G12. R22 will be V2 times G22, whereas R33 would be V3 times G33 and R13 would be V3 minus V1 times G13, okay? So the voltages should not be changed. It's not like we are shorting them. It's just that we are writing the KCL for the combination of the nodes, okay? Any questions about this? Okay, there was a question about how do we choose the direction of Ix. Now, uh, in principle, it doesn't matter because it will always contribute uh, plus Ix to one side and minus Ix to the other side. But as always, use passive sign convention. So if the voltage source has positive on this side and negative on the other side, that is the voltage source symbol is drawn with, uh, the voltage is defined with positive on the right side and negative on the left side. You choose Ix also to be flowing from right to left, okay? Okay.
and finally you have the voltage source equation ok so then uh, you can again invert the matrix and get the result ok now when I say invert the matrix that's how you would set it up and solve on a computer when you are doing hand analysis obviously you will eliminate variables or uh, uh, eliminate variables one by one uh, sort of by trial and error and so on but whatever it is if you solve this effectively you have inverted the matrix ok so that's what I mean now uh, next we take uh, other components which we have uh, so far not included that is some types of controlled sources ok so let me again have the same uh, exact same circuit as before I will use this without the independent voltage source we can also include that one if uh, necessary ok so this is the resistor R13 right so let me take this I have uh, my original circuit and also the matrix that is set up ok so this is the original stuff that I had now to this what I will do is I will add a voltage controlled current source and let me say I add it here ok and this current source equals some gy times v1 minus v2 ok so this is my new circuit now what I would like to know is first of all which uh, equations get modified ok which rows get modified ok I will set up the question Yes, Raj, please go ahead. The question is which of the uh, node equations get modified? Okay, only for node 1, only for node 2, only for node 3, or node 1 and 2, or node 2 and 3, or something else.
okay it's clear that this current source is added to node 3 okay now if it was between two nodes then uh, two node voltage node two node equations would get modified in this case this extra current source that i added is added only to node 3 so only n3 will get modified okay now uh, the next question is how will it get modified okay where will this gy appear is it in column 1 column 2 or column 3 column 1 correspond to coefficients of v1 column 2 to coefficient of v2 and column 3 to coefficient of v3 okay So, which of the columns gets mod get modified because of this control source? Is it column A, that is coefficient of V1, column B, coefficient of V2, or column C, coefficient of V3? Or is it something else? Okay. So the question is because of this uh, uh, voltage control current source which of these columns will get modified is it this one is it this one or is it that one a b or c okay or uh, is it more than one Okay, uh, many of you answered that it is uh, the third column that will get mo uh, that will get uh, modified. Okay, but that's not correct. I think one of you said that it is these two, that is coefficients of V1 and V2 that will get modified, and that is correct because you do add it to the third row because it belongs to the Kirchhoff's law for node N3. But if you look at this, it is GY times V1 minus V2. Okay, so the value of the current is related to the voltages here. And those are the ones that will get modified, okay? Because if you look at this current, if it was a resistor, the current in this would be related to V3. It would be V3 times G33. Whereas this control current source, it, the current is GY times V1 minus V2, okay? It's related to voltages somewhere else. So it is this, uh, uh, basically, coefficients of V1 and V2 that will get modified, okay? I hope that is clear. If there are any questions, I will take them. Okay, so the point is that VCCS connected to N3, 
so n3 equation modified and the voltage controlled current source is controlled by v1 and v2 so these uh, coefficients get modified okay and how will they be modified so first my question is what happens to this coefficient minus g13 originally the coefficient of uh, v1 in this equation is minus g13 how will it get modified what happens to minus g13 So the coefficient of uh, this one will get modified and this one also. So how will uh, this be modified? So one of you answered this. Basically the current uh, drawn out of this is uh, gy times v1 minus gy times v2. Okay. So because plus gy times v1 is uh, flowing out of this node because of the controlled current source, this uh, minus g13 will be modified to minus g13 plus gy okay now similarly the current uh, drawn out uh, has minus gy times v2 okay so that minus gy gets added to this one and this will be minus gy okay so now this is how you can uh, handle voltage control current sources you don't need any extra variables or equations because uh, this voltage control current source simply adds currents to one of the nodes or maybe two nodes okay in this case the voltage control current source is connected between node n3 and the reference node but uh, it could be connected let's say between node 2 and node 3 also so wherever it is connected it will modify those equations and which of the coefficients will get modified that depends on the controlling voltage in this case the controlling voltage is v1 minus v2 so the coefficients of v1 and v2 will get modified and the signs you choose appropriately anything on the left hand side is a sum of currents flowing away from the node so gy times v1 is flowing away from the node so plus gy gets added to the coefficient of v1 minus gy times v2 is flowing away from the node so minus gy gets added to uh, the coefficient of v2 okay is this clear are there any questions So one thing you observe is that because of the voltage controlled current source, this matrix is not symmetric. Okay. So if you had only independent voltage sources and uh, resistors, it would be symmetric. But uh, if you have uh, voltage controlled current sources, it's not going to be symmetric. Okay. So now we know how to handle these extra cases. First we started with only resistors and independent current sources. Then we added independent voltage sources that you can handle either by an auxiliary variable which is easier when you are setting it up for the computer because it's more systematic. Or you can identify the voltages to which the nodes to which the voltage source is connected as a super node and write a single equation and that is more useful for hand calculation. And if you have a voltage controlled current source then uh, uh, you have to modify the matrix it will become asymmetrical but in general so that also you can do it will modify the equations uh, at nodes to which the control source is connected 
and some coefficients will get modified okay so next we will take another example with a different kind of control source which is a voltage controlled uh, voltage source okay so let me uh, take this circuit again and what i will do is instead of r33 i will have a voltage controlled voltage source okay and this voltage i say is some k times v1 minus v2 okay so this controlled source is k times v1 minus v2 so what do we do here first of all uh, just like a voltage source when we had an independent voltage source add an extra variable okay and that is the current through the voltage source i will still call it ix okay so uh, the equations will be exactly the same as before with uh, this ix substituting uh, for the current that was flowing in the resistor okay so if i write down the equations quickly for this one what happens is at node 1 nothing is changed so we have g11 plus g12 plus g13 minus g12 and minus g13 okay and at node 2 also nothing is changed so we have minus g12 g12 plus g22 plus g23 minus g23 so this is resistance r23 by the way not r13 and then uh, at n3 we have to change it so the equation here would be at n3 would be minus g13 times v1 minus g23 times v2 and here we will have the sum of conductances which is g13 and g23 but also the current flowing out includes ix okay so my variable vector includes ix okay and it's flowing away so i have a plus 1 over here and ix doesn't appear in the node uh, kcl equations for node 1 and 2 so i have zero over there and finally i have to write the equation for the dependent source okay now in case of the independent source we wrote uh, for instance v3 minus v2 equals v0 and the independent source value was on the right hand side in case of the dependent uh, source v3 equals k times v1 minus v2 but v1 and minus v2 themselves are variables so what we do is v3 in this case happens to be k times v1 minus v2 uh, but v3 itself is v1 and v2 themselves are variables so we take it over to the left hand side all the variables will be on the left hand side so v3 minus kv1 plus kv2 equals 0 okay so what do we have minus k plus k and v3 that is plus 1 and 0 and i don't have the room to write the source vector so that i will uh, copy over to the next page and write okay and this equals the total independent current source current flowing into node 1 which is i1 into node 2 which is 0 into node 3 which is i3 and the last one this is simply the equation for the independent uh, sorry the dependent voltage source so this is just zero okay so again we have an extra variable ix 
and an extra equation for vc vs okay so the way to handle the uh, dependent voltage source that is voltage control voltage source is exactly the same as handling the independent voltage source you define an auxiliary variable and go with it the only thing is that when you write the equation for the voltage control voltage source you group all of the variables to the left hand side okay so that's all that is there to it any question i think one of you had this question what do you do when you have a voltage control voltage source and this is what you do now the alternative method was to use a super node i am going to go to that but before that if there are any questions about this i will take them okay it appears there are no uh, questions about this but there are some questions about what we did before with the voltage controlled uh, current source here and i think the question is why why this entry is minus g13 plus gy okay so that comes from writing the kcl for uh, this node let me write it in a different color here so the kcl uh, for this node includes the current there plus the current there plus the current there plus the current there equals the current flowing in from the independent current source so the current in r13 is g13 times v3 minus v1 current in r23 is g23 times v3 minus v2 and the current in r33 is g33 times v3 and the current in the dependent source is plus gy times v1 minus v2 okay so if you look at the coefficient of v1 it is plus gy minus g13 okay so v1 v1 appears here and here so it is gy minus g13 and v2 it is minus gy minus g23 okay so i hope that is clear okay so this is the uh, what is known as modified nodal analysis with voltage controlled voltage source okay now uh, we will try to do the same using the super node now which is the super node that is basically the combination of node n3 and the reference node that is where the voltage source is connected it's a dependent voltage source but that's where it is so we had three uh, kcl equations for n1 n2 and n3 now which of these equations will get uh, modified because of the super node this is a question please try to answer that which of these three equations which of the kcl equations at uh, these three nodes will get modified as a result of making a super node uh, as shown here so i hope all of you are able to uh, hear my question and understand it my question is we have a voltage controlled uh, voltage source and we would like to solve this using super node so i have identified this super node that is combining the nodes across which the voltage source is uh, connected okay so now uh, which of the node equations will get modified because of uh, this super node and couple of you answered that uh, it is node n3 that's correct so what happens to that equation what should we write what is the new equation that we should write so now because we uh, this voltage source is connected between this node and the reference node 
the super node is the combination of this node and the reference node. Now you don't write any KCL equation at the reference node. So if the reference node is part of a super node, the node equation simply goes away. Okay. Earlier, when we had a voltage source between N3 and N2, we combined them into a single equation. Okay, that is the total current flowing out of uh, this combined node. When you have uh, something combined with a super node, that equation simply goes away. Okay, because uh, when you combine it with the reference node, you normally you don't write any equation for the reference node. So when any super node when combined with the reference one also goes away. Okay, so you have two equations, one at N1 and one at N2, which are exactly the same as before. And now you also have an additional equation because of uh, this voltage controlled voltage source. And we have this additional constraint that V3 equals K times V1 minus V2. So as usual, we write it with all the variables on the left side, which is minus K V1 plus K V2 minus V3 equals zero. And the equations for uh, N1 and N2 remain exactly the same as before. That is G11 plus G12 plus G13 times V1 minus G12 V2 minus G13 times V3 equals 0. Similarly, minus G12 V1 plus G12 plus G22 plus G23 times V2 minus G23 V3 equals 0. Sorry, the first equation it is not uh, uh, 0, it is I1. Okay. So I hope uh, this part is clear. Now my question to you is what happens to this I3? I3 does not seem to appear in any of the equations. Why is that? So if you look at these three equations, this one, this one and that one. So we have three equations and I3 does not appear in the equations. Why? Yes, a couple of you answered that uh, it's because it's connected to a super node. That's correct. But uh, my question is this uh, super node stuff is some uh, method that we use to analyze circuits. Okay. Now, essentially, uh, what this uh, means is that from these equations, forget the fact that we use super node, we got these equations. Now, I3 does not appear anywhere, but I3 is very much in the circuit. So, if I3 does not appear in any of the equations, what it means is the solution does not depend on I3, right? So, why does it not depend on I3? Can you look at the circuit and tell? That's my real question, okay? Okay, so I got a number of responses. Some of you said it is not, uh, it's because there is no parallel resistance and so on. I'm not very sure what is meant, uh, what was in your mind when you wrote that, but uh, one of you did answer correctly. See, the point is that this is a current source across a voltage source. Okay, now this is a dependent voltage source, 
but anyway because this is a voltage source the voltage at this node is set by this uh, voltage source okay so whatever uh, even if you have current sources here it's not going to be able to change the voltage here okay this uh, voltage source will absorb any current that is put into it so because you have uh, this current source across this voltage source it doesn't appear it is not uh, it doesn't matter what the value of i3 is the solution will remain the same so the correct answer is that it appears across the voltage source okay so what we have done is so far to do nodal analysis of uh, circuits and we did it for cases with current sources and resistances in all cases we the equation can be set up as some uh, matrix so times some variable vector equal the vector of independent sources okay so we can do this in all cases now when you have only current sources and uh, resistances this is the cleanest case we have a symmetric g and in all these cases of course the uh, vector is obtained as g inverse times i okay and when we have independent voltage sources so we can do modified nodal analysis which is mna or basically we do modified nodal analysis by introducing extra variables or alternatively we can uh, uh, treat the two nodes to which the voltage source is connected as a super node and go ahead with the analysis now modified nodal analysis gives you one more variable and one more equation for every voltage source whereas the super node stuff this will not give you no extra variables okay and finally if you have a voltage controlled current source there are no extra variables or uh, equations but you will have uh, the g matrix will become asymmetric okay and finally when you have a voltage controlled voltage source you handle it in uh, the same way that you did the independent uh, voltage source now when you do the independent voltage source what happens is you will have an extra uh, entry in the source matrix on the right hand side okay in the source vector whereas when you have a voltage controlled voltage source there is no independent source that is added whatever is on this side this whole thing should have only independent sources okay so that's why you can uh, solve for it correctly that you have this variable equals the inverse of this matrix which uh, is related to the circuit topology times the source vector okay and in case of uh, voltage controlled voltage source there is no uh, extra addition to the source vector and you handle it in exactly the same way as independent voltage source by introducing an extra variable and equation or by using a super node uh, in which case you don't have extra variables now this modified nodal analysis you use it when you are doing things with a computer mainly because it's a systematic way of uh, setting up equations and solving it when you do the super node business it's a little more ad hoc 
but it uh, reduces the number of equations. So when you are doing hand analysis, you use the super node. Okay. So any questions on these things? Now we have two other types of uh, control sources. That is a current control voltage source and a current control current source. I will not discuss them in detail here. Uh, if you are interested, you can go to the other uh, course that I am offering this semester at IIT Madras. I will give you the URL for that and the details will be there. And you can also try to do it by yourselves. You uh, add a voltage control, cur sorry, current control current source or a current control voltage source and see how the equations turn up. If you run into any difficulty, please ask me in one of the following classes and I will try to explain. Okay, Or you can raise it in the forum as well. So if you have any questions about anything we did so far, please ask. So there is a question from Saurabh Mahajan asking about why IX is removed. Now, uh, please be uh, more specific. Are you talking about uh, why IX is not there when we uh, use the super node? Is that the question? Okay. So let me go back to uh, where we had that. So first of all, uh, super node means this entire thing here. Okay. So whatever is inside, it could have components inside. It is the super node. And we know from uh, Kirchhoff's current law that all the currents flowing out of a node will sum to zero. But if you have any closed surface, all of the currents flowing out of uh, that surface will be zero. Okay. So if you look at this, the currents flowing out of this uh, surface will be through the wires that are cutting this uh, red box that I have drawn. And that is through R12, R22, R33, this current source I3 and R13. Okay. The current through the voltage source is completely inside this box and it is not cutting this. So it will not appear in the picture. Okay. Similarly, if you want to think about it from the equations. Originally, we wrote the equations from a for N2 and N3. Okay. So, for N2, you get minus Ix and for N3, you get uh, plus Ix. And when you write the KCL for the whole super node, you are essentially adding up the equations for N2 and N3. So, minus Ix will always cancel with plus Ix. Okay. Is that fine? Is that the question you wanted to ask? Okay. Now uh, let me take this uh, particular case. So this one, uh, I have the equation here and this referred to a circuit with uh, voltage sources and current sources. We don't have dependent sources, but that's okay. So I just want to use this to prove, a cer prove certain things about the kind of circuits we have. I meant this one where I have the independent sources. So this is the circuit. Let me copy this over to the end. And the circuit itself is not so important. So I will make it a little small. So this is in the form of uh, some matrix G times the variable vector V. Okay, this is the matrix G times the variable vector V equals the source vector I. Like I pointed out, because this has both independent uh, uh, voltage and current sources, this vector V 
has voltages and currents and this vector i also has voltages and currents but in order not to change the notation i will continue using this now uh, let me expand this out this g times v equals i right so obviously the vector v which is the variable we want to solve for is g inverse times i now let me write out i completely v equals g inverse times i1 0 i3 v0 and this can also be written as g inverse times i1 0 0 0 that is i take only one element here plus g inverse times 0 0 i3 and 0 in this case i have taken i3 alone plus this is the inverse of the matrix and again g inverse times 0 0 0 and v0 okay so this is the source vector and these are basically source vectors with one non zero source at a time okay so i can write this uh, vector as i1 with all zeros and here 0 0 i3 0 and 0 0 0 and v0 okay and obviously g inverse times the sum of these three will be g inverse times this plus g inverse times that plus g inverse times that i hope all of you uh, agree with this expansion okay so if there are any uh, doubts about this please ask me but uh, what is the point that i am trying to prove here okay what does it mean so here i have all of them together and here i have uh, all except one to be zero here i1 is non zero and here it is non zero and here that one is non zero okay what is it that uh, what is the point i am trying to make okay i think many of you got the answer what i am trying to prove is uh, the property of superposition of uh, these linear circuits okay linear circuits give you this uh, system of linear equations and it follows superposition but this expansion makes it very clear okay now what is this uh, this is this part is solution with maybe it will be clearer if i do this so this is solution with only i1 being non zero i'll say only i1 active and this is the solution with only i3 active and finally this is the solution with only v0 active okay and we can activate only one source at a time find the solution and add up the solutions 
due to all the sources in the circuit this is the principle of superposition and it's uh, used very widely uh, to prove certain uh, things about uh, circuits as well as while doing hand analysis we will uh, continue from this uh, in the next class okay so for now if you have any questions about this please ask me and i'll clarify them Okay, with that we come to the end of uh, today's class. Thanks for attending. See you next week.